My name is Gemma Geegan from Macquarie University in the Department of Biological Sciences and I'm an evolutionary biologist whose research focuses on how viruses evolve and jump to new hosts. My passion in this field came from the fact that the um, huge number of viruses and infectious diseases in general uh, infect humans around the world. And this is a massive burden um, on human health that kills millions of people every year. My influences in this field are um, mainly from my mentors that inspire me to ask uh, exciting questions. As well as in this modern age, um, we, we have the ability to create lots of data from sequencing technology that is now available to us and it's becoming cheaper and, and more accessible to us. Using these data technologies, I can now answer questions that have never before been asked. One of my papers is about um, uh, trying to understand why some viruses that infect humans are transmissible between humans and other viruses that infect humans are simply dead-end sort of spillover infections. So when a virus jumps from an animal host to a human host, um, some viruses like bird flu for example, they infect that human and often they kill a human but they don't, they're not evolved um, to spread between those humans. Whereas other viruses like MERS coronavirus, for example, or Ebola virus, it spreads rapidly between humans. Um, so that virus has adapted already to spread between humans. And I wanted to know what makes a virus able to spread between humans and if it has sort of virological traits or features of that virus for it to be able to, to spread. My hypotheses were that um, some features of these viruses were going to able that virus to adapt to humans. And these features included um, things like its type of genome, as well as its genome length, as well as the presence and absence of certain features of the virus. Also importantly, the mode of transmission of the virus, whether or not it's transmitted um, for direct contact or perhaps through a mosquito um, or another vector. Um, those sort of things would be very important. So doing this research, I, I wanted to um, get the best a sort of team available to me and so I contacted someone in the Department of Statistics and I asked them um, whether or not a certain model, a data model could help me answer these questions and, and um, prove my hypotheses. So there are about 200 or so hum, um, human viruses that we know about and so these are talked about in the primary literature that have been published. One of the main um, biases of my data collection was that um, we're, we're only really aware of the viruses that have been published and talked about and documented in reports. And so some very, very rare viruses that aren't, aren't identified um, will be missed from this. I had about a database of about 250 human viruses and I collected this from the primary literature um, as available um, to us. And I documented this database um, with all of these viruses features and, and whether or not they can be transmitted between humans. As I said, I consulted with a statistic expert um, in the Department of Statistics um, because I wanted to really use the, the best way, the best data model to answer my question. We ended up using um, what is called a generalized um, linear model. It's basically a theoretical information approach which takes all the information that I had collected in my database and used the best features that are able to, to answer the question of prediction. And the prediction is whether or not a virus is human to human and transmissible. So what we found was, amazingly, um, a, the vast majority of these variables that I, um, these traits that I collected, were able to predict whether or not a virus was able to be transmitted between humans. Some of them um, didn't, and we were also quite surprised about what the ones that um, didn't have any predictive power. But overall, there was a very powerful model that we could, we could understand whether or not a virus was able to be transmitted between humans. So we ended up using the, the powerful technique of generalized linear modeling, was because this is a really powerful technique to be able to um, take all the information we have at once and be able to pick a model which best fits the data. So it's a very um, very powerful statistical technique. It does use a lot of computational power, but we had that available to us, luckily. <laughs> Sorry, someone's blinking right. faces at me. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs>
So we were really surprised and um, excited by our, our new findings. This is a completely novel way of looking at emerging infectious diseases. And so we really wanted to communicate this. And so I ended up writing a paper um, that was published in PNAS, um, or Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, um, which is a very high impact journal. It um, then is accessible to, to many people around the world. And following publication of that journal, um, I, I got invited to uh, several conferences around the world to, to communicate these findings to a larger audience. My critical friends in this whole process were the people that I went to for collaborative help. So they involved um, the person that I spoke to in statistics um, that helped me sort of generate this model, as well as my mentor who is really um, has vast experience in this area of research and was able to talk through my hypotheses and my findings with me so that we could sort of rationalize them. So when you submit a paper for peer review, it goes to the experts around the world who then critique um, the paper and sort of point out some, some points where they can, where you can improve and where you might like to change the, the paper. And it went to a review and we actually got lots of positive feedback and it quickly got accepted for, for publication. My research really wants to, um, I really want to focus on what causes viruses to emerge and infect humans. Um, what, what are the main features of the hosts and the viruses which make them jump to a new host. Now I'm focusing on the host ecology and whether or not, for example, denser populations are more likely to be a, a source of the next epidemic. And so for this, I'm actually using um, aquatic hosts, in particular fish, and their unique ecology in their hosts to, to understand um, population densities and, and other ecological features to understand whether or not they're drivers of disease emergence. My advice to anyone that w wants to do science, that has a passion to do science, is that science allows you to ask questions that you've always wondered about but have never before been answered. And you get to be the one to be able to discover that. It's all about discovery. And things go can go wrong a lot of the time, but when things go right, it's all worth it.